For thousands of years, humans have gazed into the heavens, pondering the nature of existence, asking, what is God? How did life begin? Are we alone in the vastness of the cosmos? Are there people on other planets? Did God create man in the image of God? Or did man create God in the image of man? Is there any meaning and purpose to life? Or is it all a cruel cosmic joke? Humans have long stared into the abyss, and the abyss has stared back. Answers and explanations have ranged from the religious and supernatural to the magical thinking of modern-day scientists. Theologians have attributed the origin of life to the hand of God, and in the Judeo-Christian Bible it is said we should not worship the stars, for they are the domain of other peoples. Most modern scientists reject God and instead embrace a theology of miracles, preaching that life came from non-life, from lightning bolts striking a random mixture of chemicals in a supernatural organic soup. An idea so absurd and laden with magical thinking, it is the equivalent of discovering a computer on Mars and claiming it was randomly assembled in the methane sea. The theory of the organic soup is a silly, childish myth. Only life can give rise to life. Only DNA can give rise to DNA, the machinery of life. If life were to suddenly emerge on a lifeless desert island, we would not pretend it was randomly assembled in an organic soup or created by the hand of God, but that it washed the shore or fell from the sky. The Earth is an island swirling in an ocean of space and living creatures and their DNA have been falling from the sky and washing the shore since the Earth's creation. The first creatures to appear on Earth came from other planets. For 800 million years after our planet's creation, the Earth was continually bombarded by gigantic meteors, asteroids, and mountains of frozen ice, with the first evidence of earthly life, highly complex living creatures, appearing immediately thereafter. as only life can produce life, then the first creatures to appear on Earth came from other planets. Most scientists agree the ancestry for modern microbes and all of life, including woman and man, can be traced backwards in time from Cro-Magnon, Neanderthal, Australopithecus, ape, monkey, mammal, including reptile, fish, plant, insect, amphibian, and so on. Ancestry which ultimately leads to the very first creatures to appear on Earth almost four billion years ago, a time when our planet was continually pounded with meteors, asteroids, and oceans of ice, cosmic debris which contained the seeds of life, actual living creatures and their DNA. The seeds of life flow throughout the cosmos. Our ancestors were visitors from the stars. Other than the hand of God, there is no other logical explanation for the origin of life on this planet. Although championed in Dr. Ron Joseph's best-selling text, Astrobiology, and supported by considerable scientific evidence, this theory is quite ancient and was proposed thousands of years ago by the Greek philosopher Anaxagoras. Anaxagoras argued that the seeds of life swarm throughout the cosmos. However, another Greek, the philosopher-scientist Aristotle, rejected the views of Anaxagoras, embracing instead the magical absurdity that life originated from non-life a concept also referred to as biogenesis and spontaneous generation. Aristotle's theory of spontaneous generation was later embraced by Darwin and most modern scientists. For thousands of years, scientists believed that maggots were spontaneously generated from rotten meat and garbage and that flies came from chemicals secreted by decaying meat. This was the prevalent scientific view as to the origin of life until 1680 when Francisco Reddy proved that only life can produce life. Reddy placed decaying meat in a sealed jar and proved the meat remained maggot free. Even so, scientists, including Darwin, continued to champion the magical belief that life can be created from non-life. Thus, it was claimed that bacteria are spontaneously generated from nutrient-rich chemical reactions and life began in a warm pond of water filled with organic residue.
According to the Darwinians, this random miracle of chance occurred only once, non-life giving rise to life in the form of a single microbe, which gave birth to all subsequent microbes, which then randomly evolved completely by chance into complex animals, leading through random variation and natural selection to Darwin and modern man. Yet this view was also disproved in the 1800s by Louis Pasteur. Pasteur demonstrated that bacteria are produced only from bacteria. Only life can produce life. Pasteur boiled a nutrient-rich organic soup, killing all bacteria present, and poured this bubbling brew into a bottle with an open neck or an S-shaped neck which would prevent the bacteria from falling into the flask. The organic broth from the open neck bottle was soon brimming with bacteria. However, the organic soup placed in the S-shaped bottle remained bacteria-free, proving again that only life produces life and bacteria are generated only from bacteria which, in this case, fell from the sky into the open bottle. The theory of spontaneous generation had again been totally discredited. Fearing these experiments proved that life was created by the hand of God, the scientific community blinded themselves to alternative explanations and in rejecting God instead attempted to play God and embrace the supernatural. They simply modified their theories arguing that life could be created from non-life if nutrient-rich organic material were exposed to ultraviolet radiation, lightning bolts, and the rays of the sun. Dr. Bauman, I learned a great deal from you at the university about the violet ray, the ultraviolet ray, here in this machinery. I have gone beyond that. I have discovered the great ray that first brought life into the world. Oh, and your proof? Tonight you shall have your proof. I am going to turn that ray on that body and endow it with life. And you really believe that you can bring life to the dead? That body is not dead. It has never lived. I created it. I made it with my own hands. Look, it's moving. It's alive. It's alive. It's moving. It's alive. Oh, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Like Dr. Frankenstein, numerous modern-day scientists have tried to play God using electricity and ultraviolet rays in the hope of creating life from non-life in specially brewed, nutrient-rich organic soups. It is this recipe of miracles, they claim, which explains how life began. Many scientists believe that the Earth's oceans were originally extremely hot and the atmosphere was made of gases such as ammonia, hydrogen, methane, and water vapor. Thus it was proposed that energy from lightning and ultraviolet rays caused complex chemical reactions which gave rise to life in the form of simple microorganisms. In a famous series of experiments conducted in the 1950s, Stanley Miller and Harold Urey boiled water and exposed a mixture of methane, ammonia, water vapor, and hydrogen gases to electrical discharges and ultraviolet rays for a week. All those simple amino acids were created. No tigers, lions, bears, or bacterial cells were produced, and not even a fragment of DNA, the machinery of life. Despite hundreds of millions of dollars used to fund experiments conducted in the most scientifically advanced laboratories in the world, every single attempt to create life from non-life, or even a fragment of DNA, has miserably failed. Only life can produce life. Only DNA can produce DNA and there is absolutely no evidence to support the myth of the organic soup. In fact, there was no organic soup. The early earth lacked all essential free ingredients for the creation of life and its DNA.